Dr. Sengen Fan, Director General of IFPRI, Distinguished Board of Trustee Member of IFPRI, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to be here on uh, a workshop, the climate change, private fertility, and food security perspective from Southeast Asia. And of course, on the behalf of the Ministry of Agriculture, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to all of the of you uh, to choose Indonesia as a place of uh, IFPRI Board of Trustees meeting, especially to my dear friends, uh, Dr. Mohamed Ehsan. Ladies and gentlemen, personally and of course, Indonesia is always looking up to IFPRI for solutions, for suggestions, for inspirations, because for us, Food and food policy is one of the most important things in the government as well as the public. So almost always your new publications, your new finding is always come to, at least to myself, is on the highest uh, attentions. I studied carefully on many of your findings, on your notes, and I think my meeting with uh, the previous uh, DG, uh, Dr. Joachim van Braun, here in Jakarta, back in, the, I think, nine, uh, 2007, is uh, a signal at that time that we should pay more attention on food and food crisis. At that time, uh, uh, that there's something wrong with this uh, the global food situations and we will face a very difficult situation near futures. At that time, is I think, in June 2007. And it happened March 2008. So I think inputs from IFPRI is very, very important. And I think this present day and to the futures, we very much would like to have IFPRI as partners of discussions, especially for food policy formulations. So I don't want to, to lecture you all experts on food policy. Rather, I would like to share with you my questions, my challenge, challenge that faced by the government of Indonesia related with food security. I do hope your workshop, your discussion, your deliberations could help us give some inspiration, give us some uh, uh, advice on this matters. First, I think the, one of the biggest issues here in Indonesia and in many other countries is the increasing demand. Sometimes we forgot that our population is growing. Indonesia is now growing 4.5 million people a year. That is a biggest, that, that's a bigger than the whole Singapore. And I think many European countries is not as big as that size. 1.5 million people. And you can imagine all of that one, uh, sorry, 4.5 million people, all of that 4.5 million is hungry. That's only by number. Second is by income. Indonesia now entering uh, a level of income per capita, 3,000 US dollar per capita. I call it I-3,000, income $3,000 per capita. And $3,000 US dollar per capita with 250 million people. So you can imagine very easily that there are here in Indonesia 25 million people with income per capita more than 20,000 US dollars. That is a rich country already. Plus, educations, the demand of these people, this huge market, now is also increasing and growing, not only in numbers, not in only in quantity, but also in quality, in diversity of the, of the, of the food, in uh, deliverance in uh, 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 how, uh, how the pe 
packaging, the information, the labeling, the branding. You see, for example, in, 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 in the case of meat, cattle meat, we always say meat as a one product. But actually, there are about maybe around 50 to 60 type of meat in just one cattle. So this type of meat to one to each other is not perfectly substitute. So when one type is the price of one type is increased, not necessarily the other type can substitute and replace. So what happened today here in Indonesia, just this present day, uh, we got a demonstration. Yeah, Indonesia is a very, very democratic now. Everybody can uh, have a demonstration, come to Minister of Agriculture. In one day, a farmer, a cattle farmer come and said, our cattle price is going down. You should do something about it. This, the day after that, come uh, also a demonstration with the same number, a meatball industry. Yeah? And this meatball industry, this is small scale. This is small scale meatball. This is not a big company. Small scale meatball. And they said, the raw material for meatball is going sky high. You see, there is a, an unmatched situation in the food market. Numbers, quality, uh, diversity of the food is becoming an issue. When we have a, 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 a hike in a, a rice price, we try to um, make a market operations. We try to help the poor and try to stabilize the market. And from Bullock, you, you, I think all of you know the Bullock system, we make a market operations. But the, the price is not just still, still on a very high level. Why? Because there are the differentiation of quality in rice. So this is something in the future will be more and more problem as well as challenges for food security. We cannot see food is in just one bracket or just one product. We need to see the diversification of each of the product of food. The second challenges that we face is of course everybody see land and water scarcity. We now in the Ministry of Indonesian Ministry of Agriculture believe that water will be the most important resources for food production in the future. Farmers will plant their rice, their maize, their soybean based on water availability, not land availability. As you know, one kilogram of rice consume 1,000 liter of water. So if I have to produce 35 million ton or 40 million ton of rice, you can imagine how many water I need to provide so our farmers could produce that in an existing technology. So water should be put on the equations of more and more on the rice productivity. For example, should, should we uh, use term like kilogram per liter of water rather than kilogram per, per acre of land as a measure, a major a measure of, of, of productivity? Or uh, a rupiah or dollars, uh, uh, farmer's income of dollars per Again, liter of water rather than rupiah or dollars per hectare of land as a source of indicator for income of farmers. So this, I think, and if we do that, if you have, we change the very simple indicators, I don't know, maybe the, the, the whole uh, policy setup will be different, totally. Land base to water base is very, very different. The third issue, of course, 
you know, the most, I don't know, maybe the most popular issues of the day is climate change. And I don't want to say, actually, I don't want to say climate change anymore. Climate extreme and climate uncertainty. The climate has already changed. Now we face an extreme situation in the climate and, of course, an uncertainty. I, I always mention our colleague from uh, uh, R&D uh, uh, here in Minister of Culture. They have the a seed who uh, have the uh, tolerance for drought. They also have seed that tolerance for a wet situation. The question is when to plant it. When to plant it? When to plant a drought, a wet, or a wet seed? Or we need to, to direct our research, go to a multi, I don't know, maybe a multi-weather resistant seed or something. I don't know. So I think we need to see this uh, 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 climate extreme and climate uncertainty as um, something that already here that need to be faced. So in agriculture, probably the theme should be adaptation rather than mitigations. That is the, big, the basic strategy. Uh, another issue is what is actually the source of instability? I read IFPRI uh, uh, publication on this. What is the source of instability actually? Is it really biofuel or uh, speculations or commodity market? or still a productions uh, in the local area. I think we need to come with more straightforward answer on these questions. Because without that, the policy will be very, very difficult. And I think, at least my hypothesis is, we can say generally, it, it's all above, all the factors. But with of course, still a reasonable doubt, but I can say, at least in my position, that international market now is not a safe haven for price stability. International market is not a safe haven for price stability. Because sometimes, and at the, in the last five years, the source of instability is come from the international market. So. Related with that, put that on the context of uh, climate change and adaptations. I can see uh, 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 also uh, publication of IFPRI and other and UN other UN agencies that they they put on a very very simple slogan: "Eat locally, produce locally, okay. reduce transportation." So I think this. Notions is a very have a very very strategic impact on the total policy. Yes. Again, if IPRI could give us more straightforward uh, uh, result of study on these matters, it's going to be very very useful for all of us. Source of instability is very important, so we could uh, formulate more. Uh, uh, exact policy. The other things is, of course, this is very uh, already becoming a very long debate on uh, at least myself and Pak Bambang, for example, uh, in uh, poverty reduction. It's related with farmers' income and poverty. To help farmers' income, politically at least, Everyone would say, just increase the price of farmers' product. But at the same time, when we increase the farmers' products, uh, the price of farmer products, it creates problems to poverty reductions because the, 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 the price of food becoming higher. So should we continue this dilemma? Eh? Or should we 
uh, discuss more to find uh, better answers, to find uh, better solutions for the, these uh, old uh, uh, questions. Because I have been, in, uh, my time is uh, already off, I would like to say my last word related with biofuel. I would like to, to make a case to IFPRI and to challenge uh, a discussion related with biofuel. There is no substitution for liquid energy rather than biofuel. So biofuel is something that will happen. Biofuel is there already. Now, in Indonesia, at least this is something that I've been challenging uh, the World Bank. If we must, if we must do biofuel, then I think palm oil has a better solution. Why? Because palm oil is nine times more productive than soybean, for example. Five times more productive than rapeseed and maize. So, and palm oil have uh, less uh, competitive with uh, com compared to uh, biofuel, uh, food and biofuel uh, competitions. So, rather than try to against palm oil, and I, of course, I would like very much to hear from IFPRI if you have more concrete and uh, 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 academic research related with palm oil and in uh, gas emissions, carbon, and methane, because our finding is not like that. It's not as, as bad as it sounds by, by many NGOs. But if we do buy a few, then I think Indonesia could provide some some support, which is uh, our products of palm oil, as an alternative for everybody to use in uh, uh, for biofuel productions. So, ladies and gentlemen, forgive me if I not give you uh, data or analysis, uh, figures analysis, but rather to give you questions, because again, we need that answer, and our farmers need it. Our poor. Uh, also need uh, a good policy related with this. I thank you for your kind attentions. Of